see you guys today. Nice cooler day than it has been. I'll tell you, weather has been brutal, but good to see you guys here this morning. Those again, Facebook Live or YouTube Live, we're grateful for your tuning in also. So let's go to the Lord in prayer this time. Heavenly Father, as we come, we just praise you for this day. Lord, it is the weather seems to have broken some, and Lord, for this we're grateful that there's still people who were impacted by severe heat and things. I pray, Father, your protection upon them. But Lord, as we gather today, just strengthen our minds and hearts to know your word and to, Lord, to defend the faith, to contend for the faith, to proclaim the glory of Jesus among the nations. So, Father, just bless this time. We pray this in Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. 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 All right. Well, glad to see you guys here today. We're going to be in 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3, starting in verse 14. Uh, but while you're turning there, just want to give an announcement, a uh, reminder that this coming Sunday night, we have a children's ministry team meeting. And I'm encouraging everyone to come, whether you're going to work with children or not, to just come so we can pray. Uh, we want to reach the children in this area. As I mentioned this past Sunday, uh, it was 100 years ago, uh, 1923, that they began cottage prayer meetings because there was a burden to reach the children in this area. And as a result of that, a Sunday school, and you guys know the history of Sunday school, to a mission church, mission church to Indian River Baptist Church. So I encourage you to come this Sunday night at uh, 6 p.m. We'll be here at the, the fellowship hall. Uh, so for that, and then just one other brief announcement. Uh, we'll try to get back on track with having our regular uh, business meeting. So uh, our next one will be the second Wednesday of the month. So that would be next Wednesday. It will be in the evening uh, at our normal time. Announcement will be in the, the bulletin for our Wednesday evening. And we'll have the business meeting, and then we'll have a prayer meeting afterwards also. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that. So. We're in 1 Timothy chapter 3, and uh, going into this passage here, because of something we looked at this past Sunday, you know, we started our series in Jude, uh, we saw the first three verses of Jude, and we saw that we're to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. And so contend means to defend, means to, to stand for, to promote, to uh, hold fast the faith that was what once for all delivered to the saints. And this is a understanding we need to let sink in is that there's not new revelation of who God is. Now we may learn something new about God, but it's not something that's new that God hasn't already revealed. And I would hope we would learn new things about God every day from his word, not from just our own opinions and our own ideas. Uh, there are lots of people out there who come up with lots of ideas about who God is and the way things are. You know, it's amazing how a lot of people are spiritual, but that doesn't necessarily mean they believe in the one true God. You know, I mentioned this past Sunday that fi only 51% of Americans believe that there is a God, that there's a heaven, that there's a hell, that there are angels, and that there are demons. I mean, those, those five things, and those are just basic things that are taught in the Scripture. Heaven is a real place. Hell is a real place. Angels are real beings. Fallen angels are real beings. I mean, these are the, and then that there's God. But it's interesting when you think about that, 51%, only 51% in our nation believe that. Here's the question, what do they believe about God? Which God? You know, just because they believe in a generic God doesn't necessarily mean they're believing in the God of the Scripture. And so we have to be clear when we're proclaiming this faith that was once for all delivered to the saints who, who God is. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. There are many groups out there that would say we follow God, but yet they deny the Trinity. They deny who Christ is. They deny that God has come in the flesh. And so this is not a, a new problem that we have to contend with in our day and time. It's been there. That's why it was written in the first century. Uh, there were false teachers who were entering in. That's what Jude wrote about. Well, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is speaking to young Timothy. He's a pastor trying to encourage him and showing him how to conduct yourself in the household of God. 
how, how to behave, what to believe according to the word, how to do church, so to speak. In chapter 3 is where he gives the uh, qualifications, you know, for the, the bishop or the pastor or elder. Those terms are used interchangeably and also the qualifications for deacons. And then in verse 14, he picks up this after saying these are the two offices in the church. Okay, now how do you live this? In verse 14, he says, These things I write to you, though I hope to come to you shortly. But if I am delayed, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. So he's saying, I've written to you. He says, I've already given here. This is how you organize yourself as a church. And this is how... <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. This is how you organize yourself as a church. This is how you conduct yourself in the church. He says, I, I want to come to you and tell you, but I, I'm, if I'm delayed, let me go ahead and write it down. Let me go ahead and, and inform you. And I'm glad he wrote it down for us. And so he's pointing out the fact that the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth, we are God's representatives on the earth. We've looked at that concept the past several weeks about the fact that we are what? Ambassadors for Christ. We represent God on the earth. We are made in His image. We're to go and subdue, the, the uh, have dominion over the earth. I mean, that's going all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. We're His representatives here on the earth. And where we see that representation most fully expressed is in the church, the church of the living God, because the church is what? The body of Christ. It's also called what? The pillar and ground of the truth. It's the church. And when we say church here, we're talking about the believers. We're talking about who we are in Christ. The ones who are called out of sin and darkness and into his marvelous light. And so he's pointing out that it's the church. You guys are the representatives of God on the earth. What is it that we're to proclaim? What is it that we're to do? He says, I've told you how to conduct yourself in the church. But here's why. Here's the foundation for this. He says in verse 16, And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. And when he's talking about mystery, he's just talking about this, this is what was hidden in, in the past. If you read the Old Testament, you only got glimpses of this. He says, and now it's been what fully revealed in Christ. This is what we're to do. This is what we're to believe. And what is it? Number one, that God was manifested in the flesh. That God himself has come to earth. Who is that? That's Jesus. Jesus is the one, the eternal son of God who left heaven, came to earth, became like one of us. He, he tabernacled with us. It says in John chapter 1, uh, when we see that, that he uh, we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. He's the one who came and dwelt among us. So he was what? Manifested in the flesh. He's not one who just appeared and it just seemed like he was here. No, he was actually in the flesh. So that when they nailed him to the cross, it was his hands and his feet. It was his blood that was shed. He was manifested. And when he was with them, he ate with them. He touched them. He healed people by touch. And he healed people just by uh, his word. He was manifested in the flesh. That's a foundational belief. And again, there's people today who wouldn't accept that. They wouldn't believe that God is Emmanuel, God with us. But he was what? Also what? Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. When he goes to the cross, he brings, the, the, pays the penalty for our sin. He is the one who is the uh, one who spotless Lamb of God who takes our place so that we can be what? Justified. We can receive that justification through Christ and through Christ alone. And so he was what? Justified in the spirit. What Paul is doing here is laying down some foundational beliefs for us to remember. And just as a side note, many scholars think that this verse 16, this was an early Christian hymn. This was something they would sing. So Karen, if you can put music to this, that would be great. You know, just to sing this, this would be awesome. But, but you know, justified in the spirit, what seen by angels, right? He was seen by angels. 
If he was manifested in the flesh, he was seen by us, but he's also what's seen by angels. There were stories, you know, when you see how uh, Jesus was in the wilderness, and after his temptation, what the angels, what came and ministered to him, it tells us that he was preached among the Gentiles. He was what proclaimed among the Gentiles for us to understand, for us to receive this good news. It wasn't just for the Jewish nation, but also what believed on in the world, believed on in the world. People put their faith and trust in this one. This one who was manifested in the flesh. This one who came and not just uh, did good deeds, but he what proclaimed good news so that people could hear, so people could know. And we have heard this as well. It's amazing people still give their heart and life to Jesus today. Again, although Christianity may not be growing overall in North America, Christianity is growing by leaps and bounds in other places around the world. People are just hungry for the gospel. Here in the United States, people are, are satisfied or focused on the wrong things or finding their satisfaction, their hope in something else. But the people around the world are believing on him. And still people here in the United States still believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You guys being here, those that are tuning in, we rejoice in this. But he was believed on in the world. He was what? Received up in glory. He was received up in glory. He's seated at the right hand of the Father just now. And so this is foundational understanding. This is that faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. This is Paul's proclamation of that. Giving us thing, food for thought, so to speak. Received up in glory. And again, we understand when we celebrate the Lord's Supper that we what? Proclaim his death till he comes. It's also another aspect understanding that he's going to be coming to us and so we need to take heed to this and we need to pay attention to this because guess what it's under attack just these foundational things even within the church itself even people who claim the name of Christ trying to reinterpret scripture trying to reinterpret who Christ is trying to say well God's word didn't really say that this is how we do church this is what we should do. And he's saying, be careful. Because he says in verse chapter 4, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God in prayer. And he says, be careful in latter times. And are we living in the latter times? Absolutely. The church has been living in the latter times. You know, ever since Jesus ascended, uh, time, time is not much to the, to the Father. It seems long to us, but it's not much to him. But we are in latter times. And what people will depart from the faith. What's he talking about? He just laid it out right there before. They'll begin to reject these things. That God was manifested in the flesh. Justified by the spirit. Seen by angels. Preached among the Gentiles. Believed on in the world. Received up in glory. And there are tons of uh, scholars out there. That are trying to undermine those very things. There are tons of other uh, false beliefs that undermine them as well. He says, giving heed, what, to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, things that demons would teach or even just teaching things about demons. I mean, it's amazing how many people sit there and think, well, there's a, there's a demon of nicotine, there's a demon of alcohol, there's a demon of, and they begin to try to name all these like demons. And that's nowhere in scripture. And some of that is just, that's human failing. <laughs> Can it be influenced by demonic influences? Certainly. But I think people who focus so much on the uh, demons and whatever, they're losing sight. They they're think they're being true spiritual warriors and stuff. By, I'm going to do battle with demons. No. You need to do uh, battle by trusting the Lord. James chapter 4 verse 7 tells us, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. We're, we're not to do the fighting. 
gods to do the fighting, but there's people out there that build whole ministries and stuff upon those kinds of things. So he says, be careful, because there are people who will speak lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. And, and it's, it's amazing some of the gymnastics some people have to do with Scripture to make it say what they want it to say. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. It's pretty plain when you read it what it is. But there are a whole host of people, and you'll see it out there in, in news articles or whatever. And I came across an article not too long ago. The sin of Sodom and Gomorrah was not what everyone has known it to be for eons or ever since it was uh, written down for us. It was being inhospitable. The people didn't show hospitality, and so God judged Sodom and Gomorrah. You got to ignore a whole lot of scripture to come to that conclusion. But these are people that portray themselves as being Christians and truly following the Lord and truly proclaiming what is true. And it's like, no, they're telling lies. And they're deceived themselves. Their conscience is seared with a, as with a hot iron. And then there's sometimes there's people who uh, try to say, you know, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from certain foods. Sometimes people say, well, if you want to be a real Christian, you only have to eat this kind of food. You have to eat this particular diet. And there have been people who have come along like that. And it's kind of like, no, that has a form of godliness, but that's not it. In fact, if God has created all the food and the animals and stuff, it's, you're free to eat it. Now, I know in some cultures they eat some stuff that I wouldn't want to eat that, but hey, they're free to eat that if they so choose. And so, again, some of that he's pointing out that the foundation of our faith is not found in those kinds of things, but it's found in who Christ is. And so we're to earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints and understanding fully who Christ is. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 27, the Apostle Paul also says this, what striving together for the faith of the gospel. He's going to say there in Philippians to what? Be of one mind. Let us unite around the gospel. Let us unite, unite around a common faith, a common salvation that is in Christ and in Christ alone. And that's what we're to do. And so we want to focus uh, upon that. So whatever we do, whether it's children's ministry, whether it's uh, other outreach ministries, whether it's just our everyday lives, we're to have this mind in us that was in Christ Jesus. We're to, to be like Christ. We're to strive together for the common faith, the faith of, that's found in, our, in the Word of God, the faith that's in Christ, in Christ alone. So be encouraged to trust the Lord. Be encouraged to stand for the faith. Again, places around the world where it's difficult to be a Christian, they're giving their lives to Christ. Here in the United States where you don't have to face much persecution, I mean, persecution's coming, people are indifferent to Christ. Regardless of where people find themselves, whether they're in a place where there's great freedom or a place where there's no freedom at all, in Christ we're to trust Him. In Christ, we're to believe and follow him all the time, all the day. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for the privilege to open your word. And thank you that it reveals to us our, our common faith, that faith that is based on what Jesus has done for us. The fact that, Lord, you sent your precious son. He became like one of us and lived that sinless and perfect life and then died on the cross one day. And because he's raised from the dead, Lord, we know that what he accomplished for us on the cross is, is true, that we're forgiven of our sins. We're justified before you. We're reconciled to you. We're given a new life. And so, Lord, let us live not in our strength, but your strength. Let us live for your glory and not our glory. Lord, I pray for those that congregation that just need your strength right now, your encouragement, your help. Pray that, Lord, you would guide and direct them. 
pray that, Lord, you bless us to look for those opportunities that are around us to contend for the faith. And, Lord, when those challenges come, may it be unexpected, maybe one we can anticipate. Let us just be prepared and always ready to give an answer for the hope that is within us. So, Father, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Pray this in Jesus' name. God's people say. Amen. 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 All right. Well, I appreciate you guys being here today. Those that have tuned in, uh, Facebook, YouTube, appreciate that also. We'll say our vision verse and we'll conclude our time together. Let's say this. Declare his glory among the nations. We get to do this. God bless y'all. Thank you.